Hello, mate. Good day. Thanks. <laughs> You're a breath of fresh air. Just had my mother here for two hours. What's wrong with her? Uh, she just gives Leigh a hard time. I don't mind. You should. How are you feeling? Panic, mate. Fifth time and it doesn't get any easier. It's getting knocked out, it worries me. When you dream, you still know you're alive. With these anaesthetics, you go out completely. You're dead. Guess what? I got to vote. I wheel the ballot box around here. First time I ever got the chance. Who'd you go for? None of the bastards. That, uh... New fast bowler Thompson was showing some form yesterday. Mm, strange action. Oh, a lot of pace, though. I reckon he could have a future. Oh, just need some fresh supplies for your sugar habit. Thanks. When's it getting underway? First needle in a couple of hours. Makes you dopey. Could you go and ask the nurse for some more orange juice? Thanks. I want you to take her home, mate. She won't want to go, but last time when I was coming out of it, they reckon I was swearing about nogs and carrying on about all Christ knows what. It's like there's this cesspit in the back of your mind. The anaesthetic pulls the plug, all comes pouring out. You don't mind? Of course not. Now, as I told you earlier, we have uh, peace activist Megan Goddard with us, who is in fact, uh, what, a close friend, is that fair to say, of draft resistor Serge Sheltima who many of you will remember narrowly escaped Commonwealth Police while being interviewed on the current affairs program this day tonight, only to be arrested shortly after. Thanks for coming in on election day, Megan. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, now, as you know, we're not allowed to talk politics because of the media blackout, but uh, perhaps you can first tell me how Serge is. Well, um, Serge and six other men are currently serving 18-month jail sentences under the National Services Act, and. I can tell you, he and the other men are certainly hoping for the right result tonight even harder than I am. It's definitely no picnic in prison. Of course, one of the big things for him is the, um, the possible effect of a prison conviction on his, um, on his job prospects because Serge holds an economics degree and an 18-month jail sentence doesn't exactly look good on the curriculum vitae. How about your relationship? I mean, how was that affected by his life on the run? Well... I think the both of us more or less agreed that it had to be kept in the background while all this was going on. And hopefully it'll be over in a few hours. <laughs> yes, well, we are limited to what we can say on the air. Uh, if you'd like to contact Megan or contribute to our discussion, you can phone us now on 324-6984. So all I'd like to say is that I was in the Second World War in New Guinea, but if I was up for conscription today, I'd be doing the same as your mate, because it's a different ball game, this war. Yes, I think that that is an important point to make. And thanks, Bob, from Manly. Next up, we have a Vietnam veteran. Hello, Tom, from Matraville. I'd just like to ask Miss Goddard what she thinks of Australian troops in Vietnam now. Megan? Um... I, I understand that you were over there yourself, Tom. That's right. This was a good friend of mine who's in Concord Repat Hospital this afternoon for his fifth major operation to remove some shrapnel from his spine. What would you say to him? Um, I think that, that many soldiers who served in Vietnam went believing that they were doing the right thing. But I think the issues of Australian and American involvement are, are much clearer now. I don't really give a stuff what you think. I'd just like to know what you'd say to my friend who's in a wheelchair now because he was an Australian who believed in obeying Australian law. I, I would say that it's very difficult 
for any of us who didn't go through what you and your friend experienced over there to um to understand how you feel about everything but um probably what you went through also makes it very difficult for you to understand our feelings we are not against our troops in any way we want them safely back because we believe that it is a brutal war that's not Australia's war and it's not America's war either. Well, we seem to have lost our friend from Matraville. I'm sorry. 